Flavius Rosimer was a Romanized Germanic general who effectively ruled the remaining territory of the Western Roman Empire from 456 until his death, in 472, deriving his power from his position as Magister Militum of the Western Empire. Rosimer exercised political control through a series of puppet emperors. Rosimer's military office and his dominance over the empire led to historians such as J. B. Berry to conclude that he was a link between previous magistri militum, such as the Vandal Stilicho, and the Germanic king of Italy, Odoacer. Odoacer deposed Western Emperor Romulus Augustulus in 476, in an act often considered to mark the fall of the Roman Empire. Lineage Rissima was the son of Richila, the Suevich king of Galicia. His mother was the daughter of Walla, king of the Visigoths. It has been surmised that such an alliance between the Suva and the Visigoths would have been made before Walla's death in 418, after which Walla's successes may have become hostile toward the family members of the deceased king. As entry into the Western Empire's military was a frequently used option for losers of struggles for leadership among the barbarians. Rissima's family would have thus entered the service of Rome. Rissima's younger sister later married Gondioc, the king of the Burgundians. Rise to power, according to Sidonius Apollinarish, Rissima served under the Magister Militum Flavius Aetius alongside the Cums Domesticorum Majoran, whom he befriended. A power vacuum was created in the Western Empire after the events of 454 and 455, which saw the consecutive murders of Aetius and of the Western Emperor Valentinian III who had been responsible for the Magister Militum's assassination. After the assassinations, the Roman senator Petronius Maximus proclaimed himself emperor. Petronius, however, was killed by a Roman mob immediately prior to the Vandal sacking of the city in 455. After the sack the Visigothic king Theodoric II proclaimed as Emperor Avatis, the Roman military commander in Gaul. In return for Theodoric's support, Avatis agreed to allow the Visigoths to enter Suva-controlled Hispania. Theodoric consented to Avatus's offers and the new emperor, with the Visigoths under his command, marched on Rome to secure the throne. Avatus named the Visigoth Remitus as Magister Militum, a position which had been vacant since Aetius's death. Following the arrival of Avatus in Rome, Majoran gave his support, albeit reluctantly, to the new emperor. Avatus subsequently appointed Rissima as a Cums, or Count of the Empire, a prominent military position. By this point, however, the Western Empire encompassed only the Italian peninsula and portions of southern Gaul, a mere fraction of the territory held by Rome in previous centuries. Rissima raised an army and navy from the Germanic mercenaries available to him, and commenced campaigns directed against barbarian tribes in conflict with the empire. Rissima achieved his first important victory in 456, when he defeated the Vandals in a naval battle, although Priscus wrote that Avatus had sent him to Sicily to engage the Vandals. Hydatius states he defeated the Vandals near Corsica. After his Mediterranean victory, Rissima was appointed by Avatus as Magister Militum Prisentilis the commander of the Western Empire's field army in Italy and effectively the second highest rank available to a general of the West. Rissima used his new position to assist his colleague Majoran in plotting against Avatus, who had not yet been recognized as emperor of the West by Martian, the Eastern Emperor. Rissima and Majoran convinced the Roman Senate to authorize a military expedition against Avatus who had established himself at the imperial capital of Ravenna. The two led an army against an imperial force commanded by the Magister Militum Remitus and defeated it at Piacenza on October 16, 456. They then besieged Avatus in Ravenna, which fell. Avatus was captured, forced to assume the bishopric of Piacenza, and finally executed. With the western throne vacant, the new eastern emperor, Leo I. 
granted Risma the title of patrician and the rank of Magister Militum on February 28, 1457. Leo appointed Majoran to replace Risma in his Italian command. Without a Western emperor, Leo hoped to use Risima as his effective vicegerent in the West. Magister Militum, Majoran as a Germanic tribesman, Risima could not assume the imperial throne himself, but as Magister Militum he gained influence over the Germanic peoples occupying Gaul, Hispania, and Northern Africa. He was left with the options of dissolving the Western Empire and ruling as an official viceroy of Leo in Constantinople or exerting his power over the West through a puppet emperor. Though he had hoped to take the first option, the Roman aristocracy refused to consent to this step and Risma was forced to take the latter. With a vacant Western throne, the Alemanni invaded Italy. They moved from Rishia and managed to penetrate Italy, reaching Lake Maggiore. Majoran led his field army north to fight the Alemanni, defeating them. Majoran was proclaimed emperor by his troops in a place called Ad Columellus on April 1, 457. Realizing Majoran's potential as a puppet, Risima induced Leo to give his consent to this arrangement. Though Risma had expected to control his friend, Majoran proved to be a capable ruler and soon distanced himself from his Magister Militum. Majoran demonstrated his military skill through his reconquest of Gaul and his campaigns in Hispania. Majoran's campaigns effectively subdued the Visigoths and returned them to their pre avitus foderati status, greatly increasing his standing among the Senate and army. Majoran then prepared for a campaign against the Vandals of Geyseric. With Majoran in Hispania, Risma was left in Italy. Majoran was defeated by Geyseric, possibly through treachery, near modern-day Valencia, Spain, while organizing a mercenary army. During his absence, Risima convinced the Senate to turn against the Emperor, who soon disbanded his army and returned to Italy. Learning that the Emperor was in Tortona, Risima led a detachment there and arrested him. Deposing Majoran on August 3, 461, Risima had the Emperor tortured and finally beheaded on August 7. Libius Severus Rissima's murder of Majoran did not sit well with some portions of the military establishment, notably the commanding general in Gaul, Egidius, and the commanding general in Dalmatia, Marcellinus, who ruled their respective domains independent from imperial authority. These two generals entered open hostilities with Rissima and refused to recognize Rissima's position. Rissima ruled the West without an emperor for three months. Facing pressure from the Senate and Italian aristocracy, Rissima named the undistinguished Senator Libius Severus as his puppet emperor. Though Severus was recognized by the Senate, the Eastern Emperor Leo I refused to recognize him as his Western counterpart. Though he faced open military opposition from Western generals, with the docile Severus as emperor, Risma was master of Rome. The chief problems facing Risma during Severus' reign was military opposition from the Vandals and political opposition from the Eastern Empire. The Vandals had continuously raided the Italian coast since the assassination of Valentinian III in 455, wreaking havoc upon the Italian economy. At the same time Eastern Emperor Leo refused to recognize Severus as the legitimate Western Emperor and refused to provide assistance to the Western government as a consequence. Constantinople had made peace with Geyseric in 462, but had refused to intervene in the Vandal raids. Due to diminished tax revenues and with the key armies of the West under opposition control, Risma needed assistance from the East in order to maintain order in the West. As such, Severus, despite his docile nature, represented an obstacle to Risma's power. Upon Severus' death in 465, rumored, according to Cassiodorus, to have been poisoned by Risma, Risma proceeded to rule the West for 18 months without an emperor as he waited for Leo to name Severus a successor. Anthemius the Vandals saw the vacant Western throne as an opportunity to increase their role in imperial politics. 
Gaiseric supported Olibrisa candidacy for appointment as emperor. Gaiseric had family ties with Olibrius as both Olibrius and Gaiseric's son Hunneric had married the two daughters of Valentinian III. With Olibrius on the throne, Gaiseric would become the real power behind the throne in the west, replacing Rissima. To put Leo under pressure, the Vandals extended their attacks on Sicily and Italy to the territories of the Eastern Empire, sacking and enslaving people living in Illyricum, the Peloponnese and other parts of Greece. Faced with increased Vandal raiding, in 467 Leo named the commanding general of the Illyrian army, Anthemius, as Western Emperor. Leo sent Anthemius to Italy with an army led by the commanding general of the Dalmatian army, Marcellinus, who had previously rebelled against Rissimus to secure the Western throne and recapture North Africa from the Vandals. Rissima must have initially viewed Anthemius' appointment as undermining his position. Unlike Livius Severus, Anthemius had a proven history of military success and had family ties to the Theodosian dynasty. However, needing the support of the Eastern Empire, Rissima was forced to accept him. To solidify his connections with the new emperor, Rissima diplomatically married Anthemius' a daughter Alapia, and for some time lived in peace with Anthemius. Soon after assuming the western throne, Anthemius granted Marcellinus the rank of patrician in an effort to counterbalance the authority of Rissima. In the east, it was established practice for there to be two supreme commanders where in the west it had become common to only have one. With his experience with the eastern military structure, this may have been an attempt by Anthemius to introduce the eastern structure and rule like an eastern emperor using the successful and trustworthy Marcellinus as co-supreme commander with Rissima. Both eastern emperor Leo and Anthemius had seen the difficulty any western emperor had in maintaining control over the western military with the existence of a singular unchallenged supreme commander. In 468, eastern emperor Leo organized a grand campaign attack against the Vandals in North Africa, in which the east and west would commit substantial forces. The commanding general of the Thracian army Basiliscus, brother-in-law of Leo, assumed supreme command over the joint west-east assault, with Marcellinus given direct command of the forces from the west. The overall plan called for a three-pronged attack between Basiliscus, Marcellinus, and the military count of Egypt Heraclius of Edessa. Basiliscus was to land at a distance from Carthage with the main army and then link up with Heraclius, advancing from Tripolitania. Marcellinus was to secure Sicily and Sardinia and then advance to Carthage. Rissimus, under the overall command of Marcellinus, commanded a large portion of the western forces in the expedition. Rissimus' behavior raised suspicions that he secretly wanted the expedition to fail, which it ultimately did following the disastrous Battle of Cape Bon. Most of the joint armada was destroyed, with Marcellinus himself being assassinated by his own soldiers while in Sicily perhaps at the instigation of Rissima. The failed joint expedition against the Vandals bankrupted the Western and Eastern empires and greatly reduced their military might. Upon hearing of the disastrous defeat, the Visigoths resumed their wars of expansion against the West and the Vandals resumed raids on Italy. Additionally, with Marcellinus dead, Rissima was left as the sole supreme commander of the West. Marcellinus had been Anthemius a favorite of the two generals, and his death served to widen the divide between the emperor and Rissima. The tipping point of their relationship was the trial of Romanus, the imperial chancellor and supporter of Rissima, whom Anthemius accused of treachery and condemned to death in 470. Following the execution of Romanus by Anthemius, Rissima moved north to Mediolanum with a force of several thousand soldiers. Relations between the two deteriorated to the point that Epiphanius of Pavia, Bishop of Milan, was asked to negotiate peace between them. Despite the bishop's efforts, open warfare broke out between Rissima and Anthemius again in 472. Rissima, along with his barbarian mercenary units, marched on Rome. 
besieged, Anthemius took refuge in St. Peter's Basilica. The Eastern Emperor Leo dispatched Holybrius to mediate a truce between Rissima and Anthemius but, according to John Malala's, had sent a secret letter to Anthemius, urging him to kill Olibrius. Rissima intercepted the letter, showed it to Olibrius, and had him proclaimed emperor. The siege lasted for five months. Rissima finally entered the city and succeeded in separating the port on the Tiber from the Palatine, starving the supporters of the emperor. Both sides appealed to the field army in Gaul, but the Burgundian command in general of Gaul, Gundabid, supported his uncle Rissima. Anthemius held out until his supporters deserted him. Disguised as a beggar, the emperor was caught attempting to flee the city at the church of Santa Maria in Trastevere, where he was beheaded on July 11,472. Rissima then proclaimed Olibrius as emperor, who was the candidate for emperor that he and Geiseric had once favoured. Death. Rissima's rule lasted until his death from a hemorrhage on August 18, 472, six weeks after deposing Anthemius. His title of patrician and position as supreme commander were assumed by his nephew Gundabad. Without a powerful figure to guide it, the Western Roman Empire experienced an even more rapid succession of emperors, none of whom was able to effectively consolidate power. The line of Western Roman emperors ended with Odoas's deposition of Romulus Augustulus, reunifying the imperial power in far-off Constantinople. Appearances in opera Rissima's life was used as a subject of opera libretti in the 17th and 18th centuries, embellishing his biography with romantic and political intrigues. The earliest setting was Matteo Norris's Rissimero Rida Vandelli, which focuses on the installation of Arthemius in Rome and the promise of marriage to his daughter Demetia. A better-known setting was Apostola Zeno and Pietro Parietti's libretto Flavio Anicio a libri outset by Francesco Gasparini, Nicola Porpora, Leonardo Vinci, and Niccolo Giomelli. This libretto is based on Rissima's siege of Rome and his relationship with Olibrius and their loves.